Bell's Bells, Liddell. Ah, clang, clang, clang. <laughs> Hello, huge movie fanatic Nate coming at you, and I have a beautiful spring day. It's May 1st, 2018. It's finally, after like a mid-April freaking blizzard uh, in Minnesota, it's finally freaking, you know, been nice the last week or so, and the snow's freaking gone, and wow, we're actually in the full spring mode. This is the first time I've wore a short sleeve uh, shirt, I think, in a review since October, probably, or something like that, so... As always, uh, what has, as what normally happens this time of year, you know, you'll see me just energized and charged with spring, fantastic spring energy and stuff. So that's yet again happening. So yay for spring and warm weather. I'm coming at you to review a movie that I saw not long after it came out in video back in the day in 1990, I don't know, 6 or whenever the hell it came out on video. A movie that I just recently got a DVD of by the name of the Mangler. I just recently picked this up at Family Video, previously viewed <clears throat> for a reasonable price, not ever owning this on DVD. I don't think I ever owned the DVD. I think all I ever owned of this movie was this, previously viewed VHS. This is the unrated version. Back when this came out on video, much like with um, Jason Goes to Hell, there was an R-rated theatrical cut of this and also this unrated version, which obviously showed more gore. I'd never seen, unfortunately, I'd never seen the R-rated version until I got this DVD. Unfortunately, that's what sucks about the DVD, is for some reason it only has the uh, theatrical rated version. But I always kind of liked the cover, like this cover. Um, I actually thought that was pretty cool, and um, this cover absolutely sucks in my opinion. So. Uh, I'm coming at you to review The Mangler. I just recently rewatched this after not having seen it for a really, really, really long time. It's basically about a freaking killer laundry sheet cleaner presser machine or something like that. So basically this is billed as being like, you know, director of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Toby Hooper, star of Nightmare on Elm Street, Robert England, based on a short story by Stephen King, so it's like three, um, the DVD has an alternate edit comparison, that's that's as close as you get to a unrated version, you actually do get like to see what the unrated footage looks like in a stupid side-by-side -side comparison, but they build, this movie was heavily billed as like three masters of horror come together, you know, it's just like, I mean, like like Robert England. Well, I guess in a performer sense, I guess Robert England is a master of horror in a performer sense of the word. But you know, Toby Hooper really, in my opinion, hasn't done and pretty much the only thing he did of any kind of real merit that I've seen. Of course, I haven't seen everything he's done. Is the original Chainsaw? People would argue that you know, Poltergeist is you know good. Well, then I my answer to that is well, it's Steven Spielberg movie more than it's a Toby Hooper movie. <clears throat> but this is billed as, you know, three masters of horror come together. Um, this is, it has a crush on you. I mean, I don't think that was a tagline from the original release. That's just like an afterthought kind of a... Anyway, on to the review. So, I mean, I never was, you know, like I say, I, I didn't see this in the theater. I saw it on video probably relatively soon after it came out on video. I was never a big fan of this movie. Very much with like, um, what's another Stephen? Oh, I don't know. I, I mean, I recently reviewed the movie Needful Things. It seems like, I don't know if that was a short story though. Very much with like, um, oh, Children of the Corn, you know, that was also based on a short story by Stephen King. And that movie has a very long, drawn out, you know, it's, it's very evident that it's a movie that's a short a story that's not as long enough to support like that you know, the 90 minute or whatever runtime. I mean, very much the same thing with, with Mangler for me. I mean, it's just like, and this thing's even longer than 90 minutes, it's 106 minutes. And this thing, in my opinion, just drags and drags and drags. One thing I will say that I like about it is Toby Hooper's kind of wide angle lens, uh, uses of wide angle lenses has a very much of a look like Chainsaw 2 has with the very, sev you know, very often using a wide angle lens in these, you know, really cool kind of angles and stuff like that is one of the best things about this movie. <coughs> I will say that the movie does present this machine, the mangler in the movie, if you will, <coughs> a 
as being a really dangerous uh, thing and you're almost you know you're almost anxious watching people just walking around it and feeding you know sheets into it and stuff like that so I mean he does pull off kind of making a, a really good you know bit of anxiety as the viewer you know just anxiety around you just you just want to tell everyone stay away from that damn thing you know because it'll suck you in or whatever so basically the the movie starts with you know freaking just this 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 laundry big laundry shop place where it's like a factory almost like a big warehouse building or something where it's basically just a place where hospitals or whoever else you know has all of their sheets and bed stuff and whatever else cleaned and pressed and stuff like that and this big machine that's called you know they it's that's called a mangler in this movie basically there's this older woman who's getting all who's all nervous and always has to take these pills and stuff like that for i guess you know ulcers or something ends up getting pulled into this machine and pulled through it and basically comes out and at the at the other side of the machine it's all these pardon me all these things that come and press sheets into a nice neat thing and it's like presses the of course in the theatrical r-rated version we don't see as much but <coughs> You know, when a when a corpse or when a body comes out of this thing, it's in a really bad shape. We'll, we'll just leave, we'll just say that, and you know, the the machine wants to you know, you know, just press the corpse into a nice square flat package. But so that's the beginning of this movie. It's just uh, from the get go we see a kind of a you know mangler kill mangler mangle scene, if you will, and you know, one of these young. Um, <clears throat> This young girl, which is actually, I think, like a niece or a, it's a young relative of the Robert England character. Robert England is very much obviously uh, familiar and used to wearing makeup. Unfortunately, he's got a, you know, wear wear old man makeup in this movie. The character he plays is, a, you know, basically the owner of this uh, pressing, you know, clean cleaning place or whatever you call this place, the owner of it and the overlord. And he's got like old man makeup. I don't know how old he's supposed to be, but he's got old man makeup on. And <clears throat> the irony is, you know, if he's supposed to, I don't know if he's supposed to be 70 or 80, but, you know, physically he does all these things that, you know, 70 or an 80 year old necessarily wouldn't be able to do where he's got these, he's got these leg braces. There's at least two scenes in the movie where his legs are all spread and he's like, it's just like, it's like, those are things that I don't think an 80 year old person would be able to do and, and whatever but it, so I mean I will say in addition to the mangler being a kind of a creepy scary thing where you just don't want anyone to go near it like one of the only other good things about the movie is Robert England <clears throat> his portrayal of this guy and his makeup and his cane you know dual canes and crutch things and his leg braces and stuff we don't know. We don't know what the hell happened to him. But later on, as the movie progresses, we find out that I guess he had a run in with the mangler. I mean, this thing is just basically, just you know, just touched a lot of people's in the movie's lives in one bad way or another. So <coughs> after we, I'm also getting over a spring cold. Yay! <coughs> so after we um, see the initial kill with the old woman, we, we basically introduce to the main star of this movie. This I want to say his name is. Uh, Ted, Ted Levine, who in my opinion is not uh, first, you know, kind of lead, he's, in my opinion he's not leading man material or leading man kind of, well he's not leading man kind of individual, he's much better suited to his <clears throat> part I thought in Silence of the Lambs, I think that's you know probably one of the first movies that a lot of people saw him in, certainly one of the first movies I can remember seeing Ted Levine in, but his voice is just so like, oh my god, it's not leading man voice material in my opinion so I don't know why he's in this movie as a you know leading man but whatever good agent maybe or maybe just <clears throat> having been in Sounds of the Lambs maybe it got him a lot of pull or whatever but Ted Levine plays this cop in this movie who lives next door to I if I'm understanding correctly his uh, brother-in-law his wife I think had you know Ted Levine's wife had died before the movie, you know, is dead, dead before the movie started. I can't remember how, Ted Levine, you know, he blames himself for the wife's death. I can't remember if we're, if we're privy to exactly what the backstory with his wife's death is or not. I can't remember. <clears throat> 
But, uh, you know, the one thing I do kind of like about this movie atmospherically is it's like, is, is the kind of the, the neighboring situation with Ted Levine's character and the next door, like British, uh, brother-in-law character and just like the backyard or the interconnecting yards with all of the, you know, just stuff hanging and the lights and stuff and some of the conversations they have at night. It should be said that, I mean, I think this whole movie takes place in one night. It's something, you know, that kind of gets like old, like it's almost like you just, you just, you know, not a whole lot of movies take place in just basically at, at night. Like once it, I mean, there's a day, the movie starts during the day, but I think once it turns night, like it's night, the rest of the movie and they spend the, <coughs> the rest of the movie is just that one night, him trying to figure everything out and stuff. So I, I will say that as a guy who kind of likes the daytime and outdoors and the country and stuff, it gets, as the movie wears on, it gets a little like, I don't know, I get, I get day sick. Uh, you know, and really start wanting to want uh, day, but the movie I don't think ever becomes day again, or maybe if, to, if that if at all towards the end or something like that. But basically, we end up finding out throughout the course of the movie very, like I said at the beginning of the review, very overly long and extended, and just you know un unnecessarily so overly long and extended movie that <clears throat> basically, I don't know, like the, the Robert England's family, his character and his family before him and, you know, stuff like that, basically, I don't know, it's basically this, this, this machine that kind of runs their lives, like the family of Robert England's character's lives, and they basically, you know, they're, they're, whatever, they add their answer to the machine and basically, you know, snip off, they gotta basically, you know, sacrifice family members, young virgins, and that's where this younger girl character at the beginning of the movie plays in later. Like she, a lot of girls from his family's past like accidentally got killed by the mangler at like 16th birthday or something like that. And of course they had to have been, had to have been virgins and stuff like that. And <clears throat> we basically find out that it's this not just this machine that's accidentally screwing up. It's just like something that's been going on for ages over the years with this particular family and it's it's a you know by sacrificing family members and even parts of you know I think Robert England sacrificed maybe willingly maybe his legs or whatever got crushed you know who knows what you know by by you know, pledging allegiance to the mangler if you will I mean I think that it allows them to to flourish financially in life or something like that so it's just this really sick story of this family who <clears throat> has this relationship with this you know satanic demonic possessed um, piece of equipment if you will and you know in order to continue the prosperity they have to basically just you know either offer parts of themselves or you know digits of their fingers or whatever or you know crush your legs or whatever the hell happened to Robert England's character or in some cases just you know 16 on 16 year old birthdays of of family members virgin family members girl virgin family members maybe just throw her in the mangler to to appease this thing to continue the prosperity so that's basically what the movie's about it takes 106 minutes to of just Ted Levine walking around just asking questions or I can't I, I got his voice down good before but I'm recovering from a cold now and it's just like it's just such an annoying voice to want to, to even hear it's just like I can't even do it right now but it's in my opinion Ted Levine's voice in this I don't know if that's how it is in every movie but it probably is in this movie it's just like really annoying and you just want to tell him to like I don't know what clear his throat and just talk normal, but I mean, <clears throat> this isn't a stab on him. It's just my, you know, he can he can not like my voice if he wants. It's his right, but I think that's pretty much all I'll say about the movie. It's uh, I find it to be mostly just it's like filler. I mean, basically, it's a short story and sticks and you know extended into a hundred minute movie, and it's just very much uh, just plays that way in my opinion. <clears throat> and there's, you know, some early <clears throat> computer-generated effects towards the end of the movie where the machine will actually, I think they blow it up or somehow it explodes towards the end of the movie and then it actually ends up walking around and chasing them, or at least a part of it does, because the thing's too big to really... So, it, it, maybe it transforms down to a smaller size and then towards the end of the movie it ends up... <clears throat> chase them around and stuff like that. I will say the ending is kind of cool where we we think this virginal young girl who's just about to 
you know, turn 16 and presumably going to be uh, sacrificed to the machine by Robert England's character. Robert England, of course, ends up getting smashed and mangled and comes out the back end of it or whatever. And, and it kind of a cool, I will say the ending is kind of cool, where it's not a happy ending like a lot of times happens, even in horror movies. The ending is kind of cool where basically we find out at the very end that the, this girl we, who we thought actually died ends up she didn't die, but she's, she waves to the Ted Levine character and is like missing a part of his finger, basically. And she's she's now, because of her accident, is now in leg braces in two, and she's all, at the end of the movie, commanding everyone to get back to work. And ah, ah, ah. So basically, at the end of the movie, this girl who was basically, you know, spends the majority of the movie being a, you know, a future victim of the Mangler is now taking Robert Englund's place. and. Ted Levine's character brought flowers to give to her, and when he sees that she's basically turned into Robert England's character, he's just like, <laughs> 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 put, the, put the flowers in her. I can't even do this voice. I'm just gonna throw the flowers away. <clears throat> throw the flowers away. There you go. That's not as good as I did earlier, you know, with off camera, but. So he just throws the flowers in the trash and walks out, and that's the end of the movie. So I would give Mangler a one star out of four stars. I find it to be, like I say, it's just too long. 80 minutes would have sufficed, um, in my opinion, for the subject <coughs> subject matter. I mean, Robert England, it's, you know, apart from just kind of having a cool look or whatever, I mean, I don't know. It's not, I mean, obviously you're always going to compare him to Freddy, and nothing's really going to match Freddy. I mean, I guess the character he did in this is is kind of cool, but, it you know, it's really limited, and he just spends basically, I think, the whole movie upstairs in his freaking little office at the, at the, you know, pressing, cleaning plant, or whatever the hell you want to call it. So, you know, it's... <clears throat> for everyone concerned, it's not a very great, you know... Endeavor. I mean, for Toby Hooper, or Robert England, or you know, Stephen King short story or whatever. So, I guess that's my review of of the Mangler. Not a huge fan. Um, as I said, you know, the night you know just wears on and on and on, and just like oh my gosh. And in my opinion, Ted Levine's not really leading man material, but oh well. Thank you very much for watching my review, and as always, we'll catch you next time.